All right. Good evening, everyone. Happy May 4th. Thank you. There you go. May the 4th be with you. It is Star Wars Day, so we are super excited. We have a full house here at City Hall for our partnership town hall with a lot of our friends um, and partner organizations that the, the city government uh, works with on a regular basis. For those that don't know who I am, my name is Mayor Ryan Sorensen. I have the privilege of uh, serving as the mayor for the city of Sheboygan. Um, so the purpose, thank you. <laughs> so the, the purpose of this evening is just to kind of educate and engage the community, um, just to get a better understanding of, you know, who's out there, what all these groups different do. Some folks know what some organizations are, but might not necessarily be super familiar with another organization. Um, so this is just, you know, just another step forward in terms of transparency, collaboration, and moving the community forward because we all play a vital role um, um, in, in just the collaboration component uh, for city government. So um, I'll just do a quick brief overview of what the city does and how we have our irons in the fires with uh, each of these different organizations um, and the great work that they all do. Um, and then the, the organizations will come up individually and they'll do a, a presentation for, for their group um, and do an overview of that. And then the fun part, uh, it will do just kind of a, a, a Q and A. Um, if you want to have a question, if something pops up, you know, as, as we're presenting right outside um, of the council chambers, we have a question box. So feel free to write down your question, put it in the box. Um, and then we'll, we'll start uh, going through those questions after the presentation part. Um, some housekeeping items, bathrooms are on that side of the building where I'm gesturing over there. Um, yeah, take, like I said, questions over here. So uh, the city government, so the city of Sheboygan, uh, we're approximately 50,000 people um, right here, uh, one hour north of Milwaukee, one hour south of Green Bay. So we're, I would say we are the heart of Wisconsin. So we have so much opportunity and potential um, that goes on right here in our organization. And as local government leaders, it is part of our chief responsibility to make sure that we keep the sausage moving and we're getting stuff done. Um, however, uh, we're a scrappy organization sometimes um, and it does take, take a village, like I stated before, to get things done. So just to kind of a brief overview and uh, the order for that we'll be going in today will be the Business Improvement District and the acronym that will be thrown around, around around a lot for them will be the BID, Business Improvement District. So they'll go over that, the Chamber of Commerce, the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, and we'll probably just abbreviate it as SCEDC, um, and then Visit Sheboygan is our tourism entity as well. So um, the city's role in the Business Improvement District um, is primarily a taxing jurisdiction, if you will. So its primary purpose is to do enhancements um, along the riverfront, the South Pier, um, as well as the main corridor and 8th Street. So, like I said, it's a taxing jurisdiction from the city's perspective to use uh, a portion of the property taxes that, that they are paid uh, to be then distributed to the, back to the businesses to enhance that district, to beautify the district, provide that extra support uh, for those organizations as they move forward. Um, so a few uh, key individuals from the city staff sit on uh, the, the board of directors for the business improvement district, myself being one of them. Our uh, planning director, Chad Palaszczuk, uh, sits on that organization's board as well. The Chamber of Commerce, um, the city has always historically been a very active uh, member uh, for the Chamber of Commerce, and we understand that the Chamber of Commerce does a lot of great work in terms of moving our community forward and engaging the businesses that we currently have here. Um, and the city participates in a variety of events from the Chamber Gala to Young Professionals Month to First Friday Forums to a lot of the, 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 the roundtable uh, programs that they do as well. So the city's very active uh, for those uh, um, programs that the Chamber does. The Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, the, sh the city is uh, one of two for the highest uh, contributors for, for the SCEDC. Um, the city provides $100,000 uh, as the economic driver sponsorship to really make sure that we have some key strong investments um, in that organization too. So myself and Administrator Wolf serve on that organization's board and executive board as well because uh, we believe that investing and in bringing in new businesses to our community um, helps us grow um, and stay stronger as we move forward to the future. Visit Sheboygan is the city's tourism um, unit 
Um, so obviously everyone knows that Sheboygan is the Malibu of the Midwest um, and we are a strong tourism community um, and a portion, when, I, you know, when you stay out of town, you stay at a hotel, Airbnb, um, part of the fees and taxes that you pay are, you'll see on the receipt is your room tax. So again, that is a tax that you pay and that tax goes to your tourism zone um, uh, um, and back to promote the community to bring in more visitors um, into the, the area as well. So myself, Director Pelichek and Administrator Wolf serve on that organization's board um, as well. So that's the, the boring government part of the organization. So we have, like I said, a lot of our hands and a lot of different cookie jars and these organizations will do a much better job at giving a fuller overview of, of, of what they do. So sit back, relax, make yourself comfortable, have fun, stay engaged, introduce yourself to your neighbor and we'll get the show started. Um, so the, the order of tonight's presentation will be the Business Improvement District uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the Economic Development Corporation, as well as Visit Sheboygan. So I believe Paul is uh, kicking it off uh, from our friends with the Chamber. Good evening. Really nice turnout to have here for this. I'm going to wait till they put my presentation up so I know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Paul Rudnick. I'm the president and CEO of Rudnick Jewelers, fourth generation store here in Sheboygan. Uh, but tonight I'm talking to you as the 2022 president of the Harbor Center Business Improvement District. What is a business improvement district? This is, I'm very excited to be here to tell you all this because we get a lot of questions about it and it's very confusing. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the Harbor Center Business Improvement District was started back in 1990 um, as a way to revitalize the downtown after, personal opinion, the disaster of Plaza 8. What we do is um, we, we were created to maintain, enhance, and promote the district, to maximize the resources and create efficiencies. Um, Next slide, please. I can't really see. Uh, next one, sorry, I just said that. Uh, who are we? We are a membership-driven organization of property owners, business owners, nonprofit partners, and government officials. We have um, a lot of non-voting partners, the SCEDC, the chamber that sit on our board, and we have city oversight, as the mayor alluded to. Uh, I am appointed by the mayor. My entire board is appointed by the mayor. Uh, Nick, uh, our, um, our district, and you saw on the previous slide, was um, all of 8th Street south of Ontario, down to the riverfront and the south pier. So if your business is in those regions, congratulations, you're a member. <laughs> but you probably already know that. Um, how do we exist? Uh, property owners, and this is an important distinction, uh, property owners are assessed a special fee on top of their property taxes that the city levies and then returns to us to be used for beautification, uh, events, uh, and then now our new, um, our new change in 2021 is a rolling grant program. The rolling grant program is open to all members uh, the bid funds are used for, again, beautification projects, member-led activities and events, i.e. our boutique crawl or our heart of the hometown events, uh, professional development opportunities. Uh, and we also, we also want to provide a platform for bid members to connect, communicate, collaborate, and, and just come together to make the district better. Um, We have had our fair share of challenges in the past, and like I said, we are uh, reinvigorating how we do things. Uh, one of our goals is to restructure how the bid does things. We've added some new committees. Uh, we've worked with consultants to establish the framework that we are now using. Um, we have worked with other bids throughout Wisconsin to, uh, and the WEDC to learn best practices on how we do things. We've cr created a formal and accessible grant program for our members. Um, 
like I said, committees. Uh, our committees are uh, communications, major investment, and business development. The business development kind of handles all of our grants for our members. Uh, the communications, um, this is an area we've struggled in the past, uh, is communication. Um, it's, it's not one of the things we're very good at because nobody fills out a form to become a bid member. You just are one, one day. You, you rent a space and you become a member. And sometimes we know you're there, sometimes we don't. So we always encourage anyone who's here who finds themselves in our district to please sign up for our newsletter, sign up for our emails. Uh, we have a lot of great information. Uh, we are starting a master list uh, of contact information for our members. Um, we have surveyed our members uh, on a couple of occasions to find out what they want, what they don't want, what we're doing good, what we're not doing very well. Um, and we've tried to create some collaborative uh, efficiencies, brought some non-voting partners, like I said, the SEDC, the chamber on board. Um, we're trying to teach, uh, now that we have a grant making process, we're trying to teach everyone how to apply for the grants uh, so that we can give them out. And then uh, what, you, what you all may have seen from us is we are responsible for all the flower pots on 8th Street, not, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them, and our Christmas lights during Christmas. Holiday lights, I guess I should say. Um, in closing, we've come a long way in the last two years from where we were. Uh, we have a long way to go, um, but we, we just want to encourage our members to get engaged, join a committee, um, attend an event. We do have links on our website to become part of our board if you'd like. Um, and then uh, directly, we'd like, to, we'd like the help from our members to directly impact uh, the beautification and commerce and prosperity of our district. Um, I have up on the screen a couple of our 2021 highlights, uh, some things you might have seen, the Night Market, uh, the 8th Streetery, Arts Festival, Boutique Crawl, Theater in the Park, Story Walk. Um, I've mentioned the decorations. We've, we've sponsored the new incoming playground at Above and Beyond, um, and the uh, mural at George Michaels. Next slide, please. Uh, in 2022, we have... Um, Again, more of the same underway that I've mentioned. Next slide. This is our very basic budget. Uh, we get about $150,000 in special assessments over the years, over the year, uh, and this is generally how uh, that is broken up. Next slide. That is all I have for you. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions in a few minutes. I'm going to do this, otherwise I'm standing weird. Hello, everybody. I am Deidre Martinez. I'm the executive director with the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. Um, so I'm super excited to be here with many of our community partners just to share with you uh, the things that we do, uh, what is our mission and vision, who do we support, how do we support them, and then certainly to answer any questions that you guys might have today. So with that, um, all right, Scott's got me queued up. Perfect. You can go back. So um, a little bit more about the uh, Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the mission of the chamber is to think big, betterment, improvement, and growth, and influence local. Um, and the vision is to provide expertise, fostering dynamic organizations throughout Sheboygan County. Uh, we believe that in everything we do, that diversity in our spaces, diversity in our organizations, diversity in the people that we bring to the table is extremely important. And therefore, um, we've made it our mission to ensure that everything that we're doing is equitable for our members and the communities that we serve and is also inclusive so that everybody feels that they belong in our spaces. We also believe that building relationships is vital to the success of our communities but also to the businesses and organizations that we serve. And so with that, we 
work very hard to be the hub or the information center that bring folks together. So if you reach out to the Chamber of Commerce and say, hey, where do I do this or how do I do that? If we don't have the answer, we are gonna work really hard to find you the people that will. We operate on three anchors. Um, so our areas, strongest areas of focus at the Chamber of Commerce are professional development, governmental affairs and advocacy, and workforce development. And we'll talk a little bit more about those things in a few minutes. Next slide, next slide. The Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce is a 501c6 nonprofit organization, otherwise known as a trade association. Um, a lot of people think that because we have the name Sheboygan and we have the name County, that we are a part of government. Um, and as Mayor uh, Sorensen shared, we partner with county and city government and our local municipalities. We, however, are not a government entity. We do not necessarily receive tax dollars. We are uh, comprised of a board of directors up to 18 voting members, along with some community partners who serve in non-voting roles and donate their time and effort to the benefit of the community. These directors usually serve a three-year term, and then if uh, we can sucker them in for a second three-year term, we certainly encourage that. Um, and so it is our hope that they spend at least six years with us overall. Next slide. So how are we funded? If we're not government um, and we don't receive tax dollars, how do we get our funding? Um, we are 47% membership dues, we are 48% non-dues revenue, and we are roughly 5% in grants that we apply for, and then, well, if we're awarded, receive. Um, dues revenue, I think, is pretty self-explanatory because we are a membership organization in order for uh, an organization, a business, a nonprofit, a government, a school, to become a member, they have to uh, pay dues, right? That's their, it's an optional choice. They can say, I wanna be a member or I don't wanna be a member. Um, what are non-dues revenue? Non-dues revenue, and a lot of people hear, boy, the chamber's having another event, or the chamber's doing this, or the chamber's doing that, and we stay very busy. But that is really where roughly 48% of our um, annual revenue comes from. So member events and, excuse me, member events and programming that we put together, um, sponsorships of member events and programming. So when our members um, say, hey, I really love that program you're putting together, I wanna write a bigger check so we can make sure that we remove barriers to access and get more people involved. Um, and then also advertising sales. So our members can choose to advertise in a greater way by paying an advertising fee just like you would to buy an ad in the Sun or the Sheboygan Press. And then of course our community guide. And I did bring community guides for everybody today, so if you have not seen them before, um, I brought you a copy. This is our 20, 2021, 2022, and we are um, just getting ready to go to print with our 2022, 2023 version. Next slide. So who works at the chamber? Um, I do, again, I'm the executive director, so I'm responsible for all things operations, um, actively participates in all programs and events as time allows, and then my goal is to really build uh, relationships with our memberships, um, with our business organizations, and then of course with the community at large. We want everybody to know that they can be a member of the chamber, um, and, and if there's a way that we can help support them in their endeavors, it is my job to help kind of bridge that gap. We also have Caroline Richards. Um, she is our business manager, so anything related to um, finance, to keeping me on track, not allowing me to spend too much money, um, she's the one who kind of keeps me in check. Next slide. We also have Molly, who is our YP public relations as well as our event planner. So she's re responsible for anything to do with young professionals, um, setting up and coordinating all events, and then um, helping to make sure that everybody knows about those events so that they can participate. And then we also have John Rogers. And so John Rogers is actually an independent contractor. Um, we are so blessed. He actually retired from full-time employment at the chamber, I would say 10 plus years ago, and loves his um, space so much that he decides to come back and facilitate all of our roundtables to this day. So we are so thankful to have John on board. Next slide. 
We also have uh, Veronica Valdez. She's our administrative assistant and member services. So if you ever come into the chamber office or you call into the chamber office, she's generally gonna be the first person that you talk to, but she's also um, the person that handles all of our chamber cash sales, which we'll talk a little bit more about. And she's also the person that makes sure our members understand how to best utilize the tools and resources available to them, especially through our website um, and the back end of things. And then last but not least, we've got our Director of Membership and Workforce Development, Scott Keen. He is actually in the room with us today. Um, and he is, well, he's, he's just known as Scott, um, and he pretty much does a little bit of everything. So anything workforce development related, anything membership um, development related, but really anything um, community outreach related, Scott's probably involved in it. And that is it. Um, so that is our chamber team. We are a full-time um, staff of five with one independent contractor. Um, and you can go ahead to the next slide. <clears throat> I'm not used to not having the button and doing it myself. So um, annually, we reach out to our members and our members are about 750 strong. So we serve roughly 750 businesses, nonprofit organizations, government entities, schools, et cetera. Um, and then through them, we also represent their, their employees and their staff and the people that they have involved in their organizations. So when you really think about it, our reach is roughly 50,000 strong. So if we've got 750 businesses and we're reaching all of their employees, we're here to really represent the whole. So, what we do is on an annual basis, we reach out to our membership and we ask for feedback, right? We've, um, our constituents get to choose every year whether or not they're gonna vote with their pocketbooks um, and pay dues again. And so with that, we wanna make sure that we are providing them with the services and the support that they are in need of. So in this uh, past annual survey, we found that uh, the top three issues that um, our community is asking us to, whether we are a part of it, whether we lead the change, whether we support it, whatever it might be, um, but the three biggest areas of opportunity right now are workforce development, I know, shocking, housing, I'm sure that's another surprise, and then the support and market of small businesses. Um, and so, we know that our friends um, and partners at the SCEDC are doing a fabulous job of working on housing. So I'll let Brian talk about that. We do a significant amount of work um, in workforce development at the Chamber of Commerce, some, some in our own programming and some in partnership with other organizations. And this is really the talent attraction and retention um, of the folks that we need in our community to fill the roles that we need to fill. We also do a significant amount of work in small business support and encouraging of every one of you community members to keep it local, right? Stay offline, unless you're shopping at Olivu or one of our local stores, um, online websites. But if you could stay away from the A word, and I'm not, it's not a bad word, I'm just not gonna say it out loud and televise it. Um, but our goal is to really encourage and influence the buyer, the you of um, the uh, community to make sure that we keep our dollars local. And so we do that through supporting and encouraging major employers to purchase things like chamber cash instead of gift cards for online vendors or to tell all of you, don't go to XYZ, we wanna drive you to the downtown bid area to do your shopping. Next slide. Also based on the information we received from our membership, um, we found that there were some, some areas of opportunity, some ways that we could fill some gaps. So on a monthly basis, we have actually become what used to be called the welcome wagon. Um, and we send out welcome letters to all new uh, members of the community throughout the whole county. So not limited just to the city of Sheboygan. So every time we see somebody moving within the community, um, we send them a nice letter that says, welcome to Sheboygan County, we're so glad that you're here. We want you to know that we're a resource and that we're available to you. Please reach out to us if we can be of assistance. Also, if you'd like a new um, community member uh, packet, you can stop into our office and introduce yourself and we would be happy to provide that to you. We also do a significant amount of work in talent attraction and retention. Explore Your Future program 
um, had generally operated in the past at the sophomore and high school level. So what we do is we actually round up all the troops, um, lots of volunteers, over 100 volunteers that then go out um, to our friends at Lakeshore Technical College once per year and bring in all of our um, sophomores throughout the county to one space so that they can explore their future. They can learn about local industry. They can learn about, um, I think I want to be a, an electrician when I grow up. We're going to have you talk to an electrician. I think I want to be a lawyer when I grow up. We're going to have you talk to a lawyer. So it's a way for us to really tap into um, and retain the youth that we already have in our community. Now, in this past year, we decided that we were not reaching them soon enough, um, and we actually transitioned that program to the middle school level. So rather than touching um, the students at the sophomore level with Explore Your Future, we transitioned it to the seventh and eighth graders. We felt before they went through academic and career planning, before they were making their decisions on what high school classes am I gonna take my freshman year, that we probably needed to start having those discussions sooner. We also um, were asked by many of our partners to um, take over some of the um, STEM Fest programming. So in the past, we've had STEM Fest science, technology, engineering, and math programming um, to introduce the third, fourth, and fifth graders to STEM um, fields. But now we have, um, as the Chamber of Commerce, are taking over that initiative because they want to grow it larger and they know that um, as much as, as hard as our volunteers work, they were like, you guys can take this on because we can't do it all. Um, and so we were happy to do so. And then lastly, uh, we want to reach out to the students at the high school level as well, and we understand that financial literacy program is really imperative to the success of um, our young adults and what they do in their lives as they transition out of high school and whether they go to college or they go into the trades or do whatever it is they're going to do. So we have partnered with a group um, out of Milwaukee to present what is called the Money Path app. Um, and we're going into classrooms and we're teaching students um, at the uh, junior and senior level of high school. What does it look like to budget? What college did you say you wanted to go to? Let's take a look at, you know, what is that gonna look like from a financial perspective? Oh, you wanna buy a Mercedes Benz fresh out of high school? What's that payment gonna look like? And how much money are you really gonna make? But this is a realistic way for us to uh, reach our high school students and talk to them more about financial literacy and what they need to be doing moving forward. We also host annually an intern and co-op event. So last year we had 137 interns that, um, college interns and co-ops that visited our community from all over the world. So we've got some phenomenal employers in our space that bring people from all over, not just Wisconsin and the country, but from other countries as well. We also know that in order to retain talent or to encourage them, um, upon graduation of college to come back and live in our space permanently and work for our employers, that we need to love them. We need to welcome them and we need to show them how wonderful Sheboygan County is and all that it has to offer. So annually we host a roughly eight to nine week intern and co-op program uh, where we provide programming and opportunity for interns and co-ops to build relationships um, and also get to know the community. So it could be let's go have coffee at a local coffee shop or let's go hike the Parnell Tower or hey, we've got a beautiful uh, waterfront space, let's go down there and play volleyball. Um, so this is another area um, that the Chamber of Commerce has taken on. Next slide, and I'm gonna take a drink of water. It's a lot of talking. They should have known better than to have me show up. <clears throat> I talked a little bit about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging at the beginning. And um, I bring it up again because we know that as a community and for our, our community and our businesses and our organizations um, and our governments and our schools to thrive, that we need to really, really embrace diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And we made a decision at the chamber that it was important for us to make sure that we had built a foundation. Um, before we could go out and lead the charge, we needed to make sure that our, our house was built on a strong foundation. So in this past year, um, chamber staff have participated in DEI trainings provided by UW-Madison, UW-Green Bay, United Way, um, and other organizations, and will continue this journey to learn and be welcoming and inclusive to all. We also um, hosted the 2021 Workforce Development Symposium, which focused on DEIB in the workplace and school systems in partnership with Freightert, 
um, as well as 4AM Consulting, Sheboygan Area School Districts, Sheboygan Area Businesses, and Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development. And we also um, uh, offered a focal point to our membership as well as our team with Leslie Laster on building inclusive workspaces. Next slide, please. Additional business support. Um, we hear all the time that supporting local is really, really important. And um, we are the uh, managers, if you will, of the Chamber Cash program. How many of you have ever purchased or received or used Chamber Cash? All right, there's a few hands not up. I will be talking to you before we leave. Um, but the Chamber Cash program is a local currency opportunity. It's a way for us to keep dollars local. So we sell Chamber Cash at the Chamber office, but there is no fee for people to buy Chamber Cash, right? So it's not like when you go buy a gift card at the Walgreens and they've got you know a $1.50 fee in order to activate it or whatever that might be, there's no activation fee. There's no additional fee to purchase it. There's also no additional fee for our local businesses to receive it. So when you buy Chamber Cash and somebody goes and spends it in a local business, that local business gets to cash it for its whole value um, without pay, being charged any fees. So the moral is, if you don't know what to buy your loved ones for whatever gift may be coming up, then I would certainly encourage you to buy chamber cash instead of something else. Um, but in 2021, we sold more than $568,000 in chamber cash, and chamber members accepted and cashed uh, 400, roughly $459,000. This local currency, again, goes 100% back into the local economy, so we are stimulating a half a million dollars into our local economy annually, and I would love to see that number double. We also surprised local diners in 2021. Um, we want to encourage that shopping local theme. So I was out on Shop, shop um, Small Saturday giving away free chamber cash to unsuspecting local shoppers just to say, hey, thank you for shopping local and I'm gonna give you some extra money to spend while you're here. We also, in this past year, partnered with the Ryder Cup to provide additional free marketing to area business through the Show Your Ticket initiative. And all uh, Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce members can be recipients of Chamber Cash at no additional cost. Next slide. And I know I'll start to move a little faster. We also found that technology was extremely important, especially through the past couple of years of COVID. And we also know that many of our um, smaller businesses or maybe even nonprofit organizations don't have the funding available for updated resources, especially technology. It's extremely important and extremely expensive. Um, so we had, uh, decided at the chamber this past year that we were going to update and upgrade our chamber space so that we could make it um, a space available to any of our membership to use free of charge as well. So with that, we've added hybrid technology, state-of-the-art microphones and ceilings and um, cameras all over the place, kind of like what you see here in this um, in, in Common Council Chambers, but we've, we're making it available to our members. So about 50 of our um, members actually hosted the, in our space in 2021, and we're hoping to double that in 2022 as well. Next slide. So, um, as this is a community town hall, how does the chamber support the community at large? We've talked a lot about membership and certainly I'm here to serve my members because they're the reason why we exist. But it doesn't mean that we don't do a lot of community driven um, activities and support. As I mentioned earlier, we are, provide the community guides on an annual basis. So this shares with um, community and visitors alike when they come into our space, um, information about all of the communities in Sheboygan County. It has uh, additionally a, a number of ads and different information available about where to shop, where to eat, where to take, you know, go to the hospital, where to take your kids to school. Um, and it also has a membership directory or a business directory. We also are the provider of the county maps, so we produce those and um, distribute those as well. Chamber cash certainly is a huge um, benefit to the local community, but also to our local business. 
Um, we provide a community calendar. This is an online option that's been available for a number of years. It is not limited to chamber members. I will say that again, it is not limited to chamber members. Anybody can use it. Um, we have roughly um, eight to 10,000 visitors on our website on a monthly basis. So for a small little chamber of commerce in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, um, it's a pretty significant reach. So we would certainly encourage that um, if you have community events that you're doing and you want people to know about it, you don't need a login, you just need to go to Sheboygan.org. Um, or if you're looking for things to do with your friends this weekend, you can also find, find those at Sheboygan.org. We uh, produce October Feast, which is um, every October we invite a number of our local restaurants to come in and um, share their favorite culinary um, experiences. And through this, we're helping to market the um, the restaurants, but also bringing the community together to build relationships in a fun space. We put on the Community and Business Expo every other year. We um, host the Leadership Sheboygan County Program, which has been in existence for over 30 years. Um, this is an opportunity for us to take the next generation of leaders, help them better understand how they fit into our communities um, and how they can um, better give back and um, volunteer and of course fall in love. We are the information hub. We, are, we do the new resident letters. We provide scholarships to local students. And again, we encourage you to shop local. So how can you support the chamber? I think I've said it a lot, so if anybody wants to help me here. Shop local, yes. Um, you can also sign up for any of our um, communication, so if you wanna see what's happening with the chamber or with our members or, or you just wanna be informed in that way, there's you can visit our website at sheboygan.org, sign up for the newsletter. Obviously, you can follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn and other social media options and that way you know what's happening in real time. You can go ahead and next. Support chamber members. So each member um, of the chamber has contributed not just to the success of their own businesses, but really to the success of the communities. Um, the Chamber of Commerce has been here for roughly 108 years, and I can tell you that the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce has had its hands in a lot of things um, over those 108 years, so things like street lights and road expansions and um, non-attainment, things of, uh, you know, so not just limited to, you know, how do we support our businesses, but how do we support the community in a larger way. Next. So this is uh, what our chamber cash looks like. So if you get some, um, get out there and spend it. The faster you spend that chamber cash that you receive, the faster you're gonna inject those dollars into your local business. And then lastly, don't forget that um, September is Chamber of Commerce Month. So um, Governor Walker had decided um, while he was our governor that um, September should be Chamber of Commerce Month because chambers of commerce across the state of Wisconsin but across the country and across the world do significant work in our communities beyond just assisting and supporting the business community and therefore it should be a celebration. So um, actually we we love to um, celebrate with our members um, and so we put on an annual brat fry, sometimes it's a drive-through brat fry, so if you ever see signs out at the chamber office and um, you see that we've got a large grill out out there and we've got a lot of brats on it, feel free to stop by because we'd love to share a brat with you all as well. And that's what I have, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brian Doudna, and I'm the executive director of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. Just a little bit about me before we get the presentation. I moved here in October of 2020. Um, prior to that, I ran the statewide trade association on economic development and really trained people across the state on economic development as a profession and lobbied on public policy related to economic development and the barriers to growth for communities. Prior to that, I was a decade in Eau Claire County in a decade in Portage County. So I come to you with a lot of experience in different um, markets with different um, partners. And I just wanna say on behalf of the board of directors of the SEDC and myself, we're here to support you and maximize your opportunities. So as individuals, as residents, as 
council members, for municipalities, as well as for businesses. So as you see opportunities, hopefully we are one of your, uh, on your speed dial, if that still exists today, uh, to make sure that uh, we can help you maximize. If you go to the slide, please. Next one. So I started in uh, October of 2020. Uh, we pretty much have an um, entirely new staff based on how our organization is pivoting uh, because of the pandemic and because of the um, barriers to growth for Sheboygan County. So myself, uh, you have Ray York, who is our entrepreneur specialist. So he's a full-time person dedicated to growing small businesses and helping people that have business ideas turn them into reality. So from, I can go from bar napkin to marketplace. That's what we do, and that's what Ray's role is. We have Brittany Wagner, she just joined us in October, and she will be community relations, but she's also managing, we have a group of in-house corporate trainers from all the various corporations uh, that um, we have 70 on the mail list, I would say around 30 uh, participate, uh, but she's gonna be really coordinating and then trying to see how these corporations in this environment of workforce how we can collaborate more effectively on the private side to support what's going on at the chamber, but also overall economic uh, workforce talent skill development. Then we have Brenda uh, Bensler. She is our new branding marketing director. Um, in the past, there were two Brian's, two economic development people. Now we have converted one position entirely to marketing and branding because talent and, and community branding and how we position ourselves in the global economy matters. And then finally, Sala Sander out, uh, is with the Wisconsin Internet, Internet of Things. Um, she is, that's a state trade association that we've helped launch uh, on cybersecurity, those types of things, so that when you start looking at uh, how you are protecting your uh, confidential information, uh, how companies are launching new products, smart products, they're actually thinking about Sheboygan because that's headquartered here. Long term, they probably will be a, their own separate entity, but they're being housed and I guess uh, launched uh, as part of our organization. Next slide. Our core services are really tied to traditional economic development, and, might, and many of you don't know what that might be, but from site selection, making sure that if a company wants to locate here or a business wants to locate here, we get them connected and actually work through the selection process, the, uh, make sure that they know the permitting processes that they might have to go through, but also look at the financial incentives. For many of you in the audience and out there, you do a business expansion maybe once in your career. Economic development corporations do that five to 10, hopefully 15 times every single year. So we should be your expansion partners because we do that on an ongoing basis for multiple businesses in multiple sectors. Market research and data. So if you're trying to make business decisions, we wanna make sure we're giving you good data. Uh, as far as entrepreneur innovation, I've already kind of mentioned that we have full-time staff, but then I'm going to just go down to community development advisors, determining gaps, and then barriers to growth. We should be trusted advisors for your residents, for the communities, and uh, for businesses. For the city of Sheboygan, you are very fortunate to have a great professional in Chad Pelishek, but the remaining parts of the county really don't have a Chad on staff. So we serve in that role throughout the county and trying to make sure that if they, um, the smaller municipalities don't lose out on opportunities that are coming their way. And then I would say, and this is, I just had a business retention call where we go out and meet with companies, understand barriers to growth, and we talked about an expansion and they didn't realize that we can help them get financial incentives at the state level or at the federal level to help their expansion be more cost effective. So my job is to leverage as many programs as possible so that you have less equity in it and you're gonna be more successful as a business, so you're stronger for you and your employees. As far as our budget, uh, we are a public-private partnership. Uh, so you can see uh, that we get, uh, 
$200,000 from uh, area governments. And again, that's part of our consulting business as a trusted advisor on their community development. And then we have private sector investments, and that's really because companies believe in our mission and supporting the community, and that's one of the reasons I'm in Sheboygan is because you have so many great companies that are wanting to grow and expand here, and they're committed to the marketplace. Next slide. Our strategic direction, so I started in October, at this, and by, we did a strategic planning in uh, November, and in December we adopted these five pillars for how we are going to advance. Number one, barriers to growth. We need to increase population. We cannot accept 1% growth um, to maintain the quality of life that you have all enjoyed here for decades. Companies need, are growing, and we, with the retirement uh, population happening for baby boomers, we truly need to be able to grow at a much rapid, uh, faster pace than we have been. Talent development, recruitment, and uh, retention. We're gonna be more focused in on that talent recruitment and the outreach marketing. Enhance our uh, DIB efforts, making sure that our programming is equitable and inclusive across the board. Single family homes, I'll get more into that later on, but let's just say because of the Great Recession, we lost around a decade of uh, single family homes at the entry level, especially I think at the entry level um, price point, and you've seen that across the nation. With the Great Recession, you just had a, a basically turning off that um, fountain of new housing development. And then finally, innovation and small business development, making sure that we continue to build that next generation. We have great generational companies here, but we need to continue to build every generation, new companies, new technologies to grow our overall economy. Next slide. So related to talent recruitment, uh, there was a joint effort um, probably five, six years ago called Someplace Better. Uh, we are completely revamping that uh, and really looking at uh, someplace better to be, uh, and this will be launching later in May, early June, I think is when we'll officially announce it um, in press releases, et cetera. But from our perspective, this is, if somebody has an uh, offer letter to move here for a position or is considering moving, making life choices and moving here, this is the close. This website should say, oh my God, I did find someplace better. And this was, you get a job offer, where do my uh, partner uh, find an opportunity? This website, as we relaunch it, will provide some of those solutions and answers. So it's not just based on relationships, and relationships are important. Don't get me wrong, and Sheboygan is really, I've learned so much about relationships in Sheboygan, but we have to make sure that people that are from outside the marketplace can actually have a relationship before they even move here. So we're also gonna be doing outreach marketing. Uh, this year we're doing a partnership with Discover Wisconsin, which is normally a tourism entity. Uh, Sheboygan County and the SEDC have entered in a contract, so we'll have a full t television show just on Sheboygan County as a place to live. And then we'll be doing the Someplace Better, we'll also be incorporating all the additional details uh, for the type of professional opportunities we have here uh, employment opportunities. And the, the final thing is on this is we will be building out a relationship platform so that if you have family members that have moved away for college or uh, for a big city life for at some point or family and friends and they come home for Christmas time or for holidays, we want to make sure that you sign them up for this uh, talent, relation, talent community because we will start doing probably every two months a newsletter dedicated to making sure they know what's happening in the marketplace and building the brand of why you wanna be here for your family, for yourself as an individual, and for the opportunities that Sheboygan County is uniquely presenting. Next slide. From a small business development standpoint, uh, we also have launched a brand new program. Uh, I know there was discussion about Innovation District. I'll just say we have backed away from the Innovation District just because of the cost of that Innovation District and the amount of space that we actually would provide it to entrepreneurs. 
we are doing more programming rather than building a physical space. Uh, so with what we're doing here is accelerate Sheboygan County. And basically, this is the, if you spend more than 10 minutes on an application for this program, but it's your business idea or product idea, and you submit it, we automatically follow up with you. We vet the idea, we try to advance it to you. We see, try to identify where the gaps are in the concept. And then if we think it's patentable, we will write a thousand dollar check to get a uh, patent pending so that you get technical assistance. So every, from an equity and inclusion, no, there is no financial barrier to getting patent pending technology with the EDC. So we wanna make sure that there is no barrier for somebody to protect their idea for an opportunity. Then if you've all seen Shark Tank, at the end of that process, uh, last year we had 50 uh, different applicants. At the end of the process, there is a five, um, five percent for a $10,000 equity investment into their business, advancing the business model. So whether that is helping them build more product or whatever, that's what we do. So again, Accelerate Sheboygan County is just making sure that there is not a financial limitation for somebody to advance opportunity. Again, maximizing the opportunities of the individual. The other thing that we'll be announcing uh, with Lakeland uh, in the very near future is the launch of a seed accelerator, which basically means if you have a product or, or service and you're trying to gain equity investment, we will be launching that program in the third quarter so that we can uh, actually invest $10,000 in each of those companies and also to try to get you to get more equity investments so that you can truly launch that business. And then the final thing on housing, um, you all know the housing market is crazy. You know, building materials are out of, uh, through the roof, bad pun. And the insurance, uh, I should say, the interest rates are rising. So trying to do affordable housing at this time is pretty much impossible. And I applaud what the city is doing with uh, land acquisitions and to make um, um, land available for that. But what we have done is working with uh, corporate partners have created something called the Forward Fund. We've raised, and since um, our initial conversations in June, we've raised $8 million to be flexible funding to drive entry level homes. So long term, we're looking at it potentially being used for childcare and labor sh shortage challenges and skills development, but the immediate need, going back to what we try to do is address barriers, the immediate need is entry level homes. We very definitely have a lot of apartments that have gone up over the last five years. The housing study that the city did shows that 97% of those in the city of Sheboygan are filled. Uh, throughout the county, I think the lowest rate is 94%. So we need a lot more housing as we recruit people into the marketplace. So our commitment is to over the next um, multiple years to continue to invest in methods to fill gaps, to make developments happen, to partner with municipalities to grow uh, affordable housing throughout the county so that every individual in Sheboygan County can live that American dream. So with that, I'll uh, close and say thank you. All right, good evening. <laughs> Just gonna switch technologies here for a minute. All right, I should be plugged in. Um, I'm Amy Wilson, the president and CEO of Visit Sheboygan Incorporated. Um, let's see here, I'll go from the beginning. My slideshow is too big to send over email, which I don't know is a good thing. I don't see it though. Okay, I have that on my screen. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna review tonight is what is Visit Sheboygan, our mission and vision, our team and location, our role in our bigger picture, and the tourism economy as it has been over the last few years with all the variables we've been facing. And then of course, room tax. So Visit Sheboygan is a destination marketing organization. Um, for short, that's a DMO. 
Destination marketing organizations um, promote geographic areas as a whole. So either a town, a city, a region, even a country. Um, and their jobs are to attract people from outside of the market into the market. And in Sheboygan, the Sheboygan Area Tourism Zone consists of the city of Sheboygan, the town of Sheboygan, and the town of Wilson. So we're zoned, that's the area we market. In that area, our largest market is leisure travel. There's lots of markets in tourism, group market, meetings and conventions markets, but in this market, our largest is what we focus on, leisure travel and group, group tours. So our mission, um, basically at Visit Sheboygan, is to create market experiences that reflect emerging cultural and social trends at the forefront of next generation travel, which slides right into our vision to excel as the destination leader of next generation travel fulfilling the desires for a connection to place, environment, local engagement, and innovative adventure. So what is next gen travel? Basically it's sparked by the millennials, generations Y and generation Z, and of course it's been accelerated through all of the post COVID um, social trends. So what next generation travel does is it asks for a sense of culture in place, fresh experiences, innovative engagement, the emerging social values of next generation travel are access and inclusion, minimal footprint on the environment, ecosystem consciousness, and technological con cognizance. And what does this mean? This means that when we're marketing the area for tourism, we have to keep all of these things in mind. Place making and immersing yourself into a place and experiencing its local culture, its local relationship with, this, with its environment and ecology, is really what's driving travel right now. It's at the forefront of trending everywhere around the world, really, for all travelers. Um, so the canned kind of tourism that maybe your grandma used to do, <laughs> maybe pulling out the Disneyland itinerary that you get handed, um, that's no longer trending as the number one interest in travel or in destinations. So here's the Visit Sheboygan team. It's kind of interesting because in 2018, um, when we were first looking at building the visitor center, we had three people. Knowing that our budget was going to be expanding in the future um, and that we were gonna have a visitor center, we went through 2019 without a building and working mobily, expanding our team and getting ready to expand our markets. And then 2020 hit and everything kind of tanked. <laughs> And, but we were very, very good without a building for a couple years at working mobile by the time we all went into lockdown. Um, so this is our team as it stands today. Uh, myself, up on the top left of your screen. Shelly Harms, our public relations director, who is here tonight. Valerie Johnson, our finance and operations director, who is turkey hunting today. And then across the top, Rachel Sankovich, who is our marketing manager and here tonight. Sam Kiesau is our creative services coordinator, also here and Michelle McDaniel, who's our social media influencer, just joined us for about a month now. She's here tonight. And in the middle, Melissa Gutierrez, our visitor center services manager, who is at a school program this evening. And Janet DeVore, our special projects manager, who is also here tonight. So the building, we're located at 826 South A Street. Um, in the building, what you're going to find is our tourism offices, of course, tourist information, tourists can come by there, um, a viewing area where we have a giant screen and we play all kinds of videos about all of the things to do, sites and attractions, places to eat in Sheboygan, and of course the glowing ball in our window, if you drive by it tonight, it's turned into the Death Star for May the 4th be with you. Um, that is also open to the public. Lots of good programs to see on there. Our gift shop and souvenir shop. We also have free on-site parking, especially for tourists who want to take a walking tour, participate in the shooter, scooter share program, or hop on the trolley. So let me give you an idea of what, how we fit into this bigger picture, and you've heard the other organizations. What you're looking at on the screen right now and what Paul presented is the bid district. Along the lakeshore, it's roughly the size of that red circle in the center of the screen. On your right are the boundaries of the bid district. You've seen this earlier. This is very micro engagement with the people in the bid district, the businesses that they're serving. This is roughly the boundaries of the county. 
um, served by the SEEDC and the Sheboygan County Chamber. And of course, they are very into expanding the economy within the county, business connectivity, recruiting workforce development, um, and actually business to business promotion and insight and connection, as we've heard. This is our market, and this is actually our outward market. As I said, our focus and our mission as a DMO is to go outside of the area to encourage visitors to come into the area. The main corridor that we market is I-43 and I-94. Roughly, um, that is our what I call the low-hanging fruit um, on the lakeshore, and you'll see why later. Um, but roughly, we market a lot within a day's drive of Sheboygan Area Tourism Zone as a destination. And in that area, we have about 15.3 million people that can potentially be visitors to the area. Putting that in perspective, we know countywide, we bring in about 7 million people a year. This is our outward area. Now, as we were starting to expand for 2019, um, and we'll learn why and where that expansion came from in just a moment. Um, we started a new program reaching out beyond the I-93, I-43 corridor along the lakeshore. Um, and how we were able to do this, you can see now we're reaching millions and millions of people on a much, much larger scale um, with our marketing. And a lot of this marketing you don't see because you're local, so you're really not our target market. We send a lot of our marketing efforts outside of the area, again, to bring people into the area to spend money. One of the new campaigns, this is just an example that we are launching as of late 19 through 2020. I don't think, it, we probably aren't going to be completing this until the end of this year. But rather than doing billboards through um, the tar largest market in Chicago as an expansion through the Midwest, we contracted with a local private trucking company. Um, and now we're wrapping truck panels and this is actually the routes in all the states they go through. So how does this work? Let's take four billboards in the Chicago area. Four billboards plus installation and renting those boards for just eight months a year is over $208,000 and that's at the nonprofit negotiated rate. If we wrap 36 trailers, a panel on each side, so that's 72 panels, the upfront cost is a lot higher but to rent all of those trailers with 72 panels for 12 months of the year is just over $86,000. So you can see right away, this frees up more money so we can do even more marketing and we can actually capture a much, much larger, larger market. One of the other um, expanses that we've gone into over the past few years is in our social media. And you'll know Rachel as Rachel's Route, if you follow her, Sh uh, Michelle as Sheboygan Shelley, and Sam as Explore Sheboygan with Scenic Sam. Actually, collectively, they reach about 1.5 million people through social media, um, but this doesn't include TikTok. This is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, but on TikTok alone, depending on what the trend is, TikTok trends about two days to maybe seven days at the most. In 48 hours, with one of the videos Rachel did, very short 20 second video, she reached 1.4 million people. So we just completed a, um, and actually completed it, I think Rachel pulled these numbers yesterday, because they came offline today, or we'll keep moving them through. Um, we just did a couple streaming commercials over social media and streaming television on Google platforms. Just to give you an idea, these are two very short commercials. One was the Malibu of the Midwest showing our surfing. Um, one is a drone showing the shoreline and the city over Blue Harbor. On Google ads, we reached over 700,000 people. Facebook, um, we ran both ads. One reached 14,000, one over 17,000. And then on TikTok, the, we only did the Malibu of the Midwest reaching over 3,200 people. I'm kind of gleaming through that because that's not the important part. The important part is the middle column where we get the engagement. And what engagement is, is when someone watches these videos to an end, shares them on, takes people, comments, or clicks right through to the website and literally starts engaging with these interactions. Um, through this campaign, the top states that interacted with Wisconsin and Illinois, really not a surprise, Iowa, California, and Minnesota. Now, these are, those are just a few examples of some of the campaigns we run outside of the area. But to give you an idea, if we take the top 10 states from our social media, our website, our visitor guide requests, 
and our visitors into our center, of course, Wisconsin and Illinois, that are low-hanging fruit along that I-43 corridor, are number one. But, but if you look at the rest of the engagements, a pattern starts to emerge. And what you can see is, let's look at California. California in social media, California in web, in web clicks. They didn't really request visitor guides, probably because they're mostly online and they're going on their phones, but they ended up in our visitor center. So what we know, if you check out these states, is that if we can touch someone at two customer touch points through our marketing, the chances greatly, greatly improve that they end up in our visitor center. Now, not all tourists come to our visitor center, of course, but this gives us a really good idea on how many touch points through these other platform it takes to get someone here overnight. And why is that important? Mainly this. So this is visitor spending from 2014 through 2020. We won't find out what our 2021 visitor spending was until June because the uh, independent research company that the Wisconsin State Department hires to calculate those figures every year is not releasing it until June of this year. Normally it's released in May and I would know already. So we're all sitting on pins and needles. So as we look, these are the uh, nine counties along the shore, the Lake Michigan Lakeshore. Um, you can tell we've consistently held the fifth position. That's not a big surprise. You have Milwaukee and Brown County at the top, of course, with international airports, the Packers, the Bucks, the Brewers, and metropolitan areas. Racine is pretty much the first stop. Lots and lots of day trips there. They have less hotel rooms than we do, but they have many, many more stops um, as you first come across the border from the south. So they get a lot of day tripping. Door County, of course, has over 120,000 rooms to rent every night in that peninsula. Now to put that in perspective, Sheboygan County has 2,000. Our tourism zone, half of that. So that gives you an idea of how well we're doing in asset turnover. Sheboygan County in 2014 had over $203 million in visitor spending. That's, people, that's the amount of money that visitors coming into our tourism zone, into our community, spent. Actually, that's countywide. So in our zone, about half of that. So as you can tell over the years, visitor spending has increased by $40 million as of 2019. In 2020, of course, we all know what happened there, COVID. Um, so actually, if we look at the bottom line, in 2014, the state of Wisconsin had $11.4 billion in visitor spending. It increased to almost $13.7 billion by 2019, and in 2020, COVID, $9.8 billion. If you want to look at the bottom line, it's amazing to me that this is how important the shoreline is and the waterfront communities are, and on the water activity, and the waterfront is the largest asset we have. Through the entire state, the nine counties along the Lake Michigan Lakeshore have consistently owned 30% of the tourism market across the state. Now, when you put that in perspective, there are 72 counties and over 200 tourism offices in the state of Wisconsin. And along the Lakeshore, we own 30% of the market share. So when something like COVID hits, that small corridor, as opposed, nine counties, as opposed to the other, what, minus the 72, 60, 63 counties are getting hit 30% of the market share. So let's hope we don't have catastrophe again. So here's the 12 year room tax history. Um, I basically started in tourism here in, on June 1st, actually 2010. So when I started, it was just me by myself, <laughs> created the first website by myself, um, basically had my own camera, <laughs> and then as we've grown, our budget was a little over $300,000. Over the years and up to 2018, the budget had increased to $667,000. This is room tax history. Room tax is where our budget comes from, and you'll learn about what that is and how that works in just a moment. Um, so by what happened between 2018 and 19, you can see our budget jumped. In 2018, the bonds that paid to build the conference center at Blue Harbor Resort matured. Now 100% of Blue Harbor's room tax dollars went to pay off those bonds, that bond payment every year until it was paid off. So it did not come into our budget, but our budget was still growing and hopefully Blue Harbor's was too, and as we found out it did. So in 2019, 
um, was the first year that we actually got to see the effect of the Blue Harbor room tax dollars coming into the tourism budget, which is why in 18, we were looking to expand. We started looking at building the building, we started looking at expanding the staff, expanding the markets. Now we have some resources. We can go out to the Midwest, we can increase our capacity, increase the tourism visits. And so the 1.2 million that we had by 2020 um, that came through in room tax well, I actually tanked because COVID. <laughs> so as soon as we were able to expand, um, and then we ran through 2020 very risk averse because we didn't know what was gonna happen as a lot of you did. But I'm sure watching the news and going through COVID yourself, you know around the world, travel was rough. It was very risky. None of us knew if we should spend another dime. Well, by 2021, as we started to see things recover, and like I said, we don't know what visitor spending was for 2021 yet, but we do know that the room tax collect collected was over 1.5 million, and I've gotta say thank you for not canceling Ryder Cup, and it got us right back on track. So as of 2019, 2021, we don't really know what a normal year is for us us yet. Um, 2021 was the very first full year the Visitor Center was open, the very full first full year that our marketing expansion campaign is launching and that we're really seeing what can happen. And really the very first full year that our team, as big as it is now, going from three people in 2017 to eight now and expanding all of our markets and mo using those resources to bring money into the economy. The first year it's worked together in one place rather than in coffee shops and on Zoom meetings. So this is a different way to look at our 12 year room tax history. You can see in 2022, we're budgeting 1.1 million because if we look at our history, we really don't know what to expect without unforeseen variables, such as moving the Ryder Cup from 20 to 21, hoping it doesn't cancel, um, basically having the Blue Harbor room tax come into our budget, which we didn't have before. So we really faced a lot of different variables over the last few years. If you're quick at math, you will figure out very fast that in quarters two and three, we earn anywhere between 65 and 70% of our income for the year, our room tax income. Um, so basically on the shoulder seasons, and we all live in Wisconsin, traveling in, in Wisconsin in the winter is risky and it doesn't draw, obviously, as well as those summer months where everyone loves to come here. So this is the room tax cycle. Visit Sheboygan is a private nonprofit 501c6. We are not a government entity, we're not government employees, and we're not city employees. We're also not county tourism. How room tax works is the three municipalities in our zone have all adopted a room tax ordinance under Wisconsin State Room Tax Statute um, to collect 8% room tax for every person who stays overnight in a lodging facility. If you stay at Blue Harbor overnight, if you stay in an Airbnb, Airbnb overnight, you pay 8% room tax on your room rate each night, and 70% of that income eventually makes its way into our budget. The other 30% helps the uh, local municipalities funds as the local municipalities are allowed to put that directly into their general funds and spend it how they wish. So our job is to get visitors as a DMO um, into the lodging properties. Oh, and I should, I'm sure most of you know, um, but as we're not county tourism, each municipality that's ado adopted a room tax zone or room tax ordinance across the county has its own tourism office. Right now, it's the Sheboygan Area Tourism Zone, which is Visit Sheboygan. Um, we have Destination Kohler. Elkhart Lake has its own tourism office. Plymouth has its own tourism office, and Sheboygan Falls just so we understand the different entities in our county alone. Um, but we, of course, our job is to attract visitors into the area to spend money into the area, get that $243 million going through our local economy. Um, but we need visitors to stay overnight in lodging properties in order to increase the tourism budget. The municipalities collect the room tax from the lodging properties. Um, they reconcile that they put 30% to their general fund or however they want to spend that. 70% moves on to our Sheboygan Area Tourism Zone Room Tax Commission. The Room Tax Commission governs it um, through a contract with the official tourism entity under Wisconsin State Room Tax Statute. 
which they're supposed to do, um, and that's Visit Sheboygan. And then Visit Sheboygan, again, uses that 70% to launch campaigns outside of the area to bring visitors back into the area to stay overnight, to keep the perpetuating cycle going, and hopefully increase the room tax economy, which we have seen since 2014, and we've seen a room tax pattern since 2010 does work. Um, and when people ask me, well, what happens if we take tourism away? I always say, why do you think they launched Pure Michigan? Because the decade before that, the state took tourism away, and then they realized what it did to their economy. So some of the frequently asked questions we have is property tax used for tourism efforts? Absolutely not. Tourism is 100% funded by the 70% room tax that comes into our budget. As I said earlier, Visit Sheboygan is not a city department. Um, we aren't city employees. We're a separate 501c6 nonprofit. Um, who owns the visitor center building and how is it funded? This is since that building's gone up on South A Street is probably the most asked question. We don't even own the building actually. There's a private owner and a private developer and it was built to suit and we leased the space. And one of the other frequently asked questions is, is why does Visit Sheboygan manage the city's 4th of July events? And I haven't had a 4th of July off in 13 years except for the COVID year. So that's a really good question. <laughs> But <laughs> the reason we do that is because before Visit Sheboygan, um, under a separate agreement with the city of Sheboygan, decided to take on the event management of the citywide events for the 4th of July, it was being run out of the planning and development department. And I believe that was Chad and maybe two people running it, <laughs> plus doing his full-time job. And it made a lot of sense um, for us to, to help with that event since we had the staff resources to do it. Um, it is not paid for by room tax, no room tax dollars, no property tax dollars pay for the city's 4th of July events. It is 100% paid for by sponsors. So anytime you see Plenco, Wisconsin Bank and Trust, and the um, festival fireworks, and they pay for the all of the fireworks directly, um, please thank them for that, because without them, we would not have those city events. And does Visit Sheboygan plan community events? Interestingly enough, especially this past year, we've had a lot of local organizations or local people with great event ideas call us and say, can't you do this event for us? Can't you plan it for us? And as you can see, I understand the confusion because we're Visit Sheboygan, they see us at the 4th of July and no one completely understands tourism, um, <laughs> so which is why we're here now. We're usually out and about every year. The last time we've addressed even the Common Council giving an annual update is 2018 for obvious reasons. Um, so we're back in the swing now, and we don't plan community events though. Our main focus as a DMO, as part of the larger network across the state of Wisconsin, is to market outside of the area, to bring visitors in the area, to get them into the lodging properties, to spend their dollars into the community, to add to the robust tourism economy of over $243 billion a year. So this is the Tourism Promotion and Development Network of which we are a part. Um, Travel Wisconsin is the Department of Tourism for the state of Wisconsin. Many of you may have seen their commercials or heard their ads. Um, chances are you may have, they do a little bit in the state, but they do a lot out of the state as well. So if you haven't, don't feel bad. Um, Destinations Wisconsin, which is a trade association for DMOs across the state, that brings us together um, basically so we can look at marketing trends, so we have um, our education for tourism and newer technology, newer trends, newer research for our industry. Um, the Wisconsin Hotel and Lodging Association is a trade association for our lodging industry partners, and they are partners with all of the DMOs across the state. Obviously, there's a very symbiotic relationship between the hotels and lodging properties and tourism entities or DMOs, um, because we need each other to get the people here, get them in the hotels, and get that money flowing in the local tourism economy. So Wisconsin Harbor Towns Association, we, of which we are a board member, um, and Wisconsin Harbor Towns Association is a marketing association that comes together to help market all of those lakeshore properties on Lakes Michigan and, or all the port towns along Lake Michigan and Lake Superior. Um, Great Lakes travel is very, very big, not just throughout the, locally, throughout the United States, but internationally. We literally sit on one fifth of the world's fresh water. We take that for granted every day, um, but no one outside of the Midwest does. 
it's a huge, huge attraction. Circle Wisconsin is also a marketing association promoting group tours. As I said, leisure travel is our number one market. Group tours is probably our number two market and growing and growing, especially post-COVID. Um, the group tour market has just exploded. So, and it was always very solid, but it's really exploded. Um, so we're a part of that organization as well, and ABA, or the American Bus Association, which is a group two market nationwide, which helps us bring buses in from all of the United States for tourists who like to travel in groups. As I said, a growing, growing market. Um, at this time, I'm gonna turn over this podium to Bill Elliott, who is the CEO and president of the Wisconsin Hotel and Lodging Association, and also one of the state's foremost experts in our industry in room tax. Thank you. All right, thanks for having me here today. Um, I'm Bill Elliott. I'm here to talk about room tax, the most exciting topic of the evening, but I promise to keep it under two hours. So <laughs> with that, no. Um, uh, so I'm the president and CEO of the Wisconsin Hotel and Lodging Association, or obviously the trade association for the lodging industry in Wisconsin. And, um, and, and it's an honor to have this role. Uh, yes, I have to talk about room tax all the time, but I'm passionate about it because it supports tourism, and tourism is just an awesome industry to, to work in, to play in, and to, to, to live in. I kind of think of it as two things. I, I love to travel, I love to go places and explore things, but just as much as I love doing that, I love bringing people to Wisconsin and showing off our communities and taking pride in, in where we live. And, and room tax is a great vehicle to help us uh, have the opportunity to do that. So um, with that, I'm not gonna go too much into the, um, the, the who we are here, but we represent right now about 500 lodging properties throughout the state. Um, just like everybody else, we're rebounding from COVID right now, but it's, it's coming back strong. Um, we also uh, work with students who are in hospitality programs. Um, we work with the, the DMOs, obviously, um, and we, we work with, um, it's probably fair or, 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 or important to mention, we work with lodging properties of all sizes. So if you own a vacation home uh, on the lake, or if you own uh, uh, one of the huge conference centers, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, everyone in between is, is a welcome member of, of, of our association. So we really um, work to advocate on behalf of our members, uh, obviously within laws, room tax laws, and, and, and many others. Um, we provide education for our members and, and teach them how to be better lodging property operators. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, the room tax side of things. Um, it's, uh, 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 it's important that we're supporting tourism because of what tourism does for our local economies and our state economy. Um, uh, she mentioned before the, the um, Longwood study that's, that's late coming out, so this is a, a one from a previous year, but uh, the numbers typically stay right about here. For every $1 of um, promotional spend that we put into to, um, advertising our communities in our state, we get back $8 in tax revenue, um, be that sales tax, uh, room tax, local expo taxes, all, all, all those, those taxes that come in. Um, maybe even more impressive is for every $1 of promotion that we put in, um, we bring in $95 of visitor spending um, uh, to, the, to the community. And that one wants to keep repeating. So I'm gonna back up for a minute and talk about how room tax started. Um, it was back in the 1960s. Uh, uh, municipalities and, and, and uh, regions uh, like Sheboygan um, didn't have the money to promote their area as a destination. Um, we had some funding back then to, to promote Wisconsin uh, in general, um, but the marketing was either left up to the state or to the individual properties. And when it comes to the budgets that we're talking about to, to, um, to, to market a community like this, no, no single hotel uh, is gonna be able to, 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 um, to do that as effectively as the, the, the CVBs are. So, um, uh, so what we did in the 1960s is we voluntarily accepted to, um, uh, to, to pass a law that would allow uh, uh, for a room tax to be put in place, and that was specifically meant to help promote, um, to promote a community. Nowadays, we look at that as a, a three-legged stool, and if any of these three legs breaks, um, it's detrimental to the tourism economy uh, in, in a community. Um, the first one I'll talk about is the state-level 
uh, marketing. Now that comes through um, through mostly through um, general purpose revenue at the state level. It's 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 um, a part of the the budget every couple years when when we do that. Um, and that's uh, uh, you mentioned Pure Michigan before. It's our version of that. It's the uh, um, Department of Tourism, Travel Wisconsin. You may have heard of. I might drive up here. I was listening to a radio show and I heard the Secretary of Tourism talking about all the cool things to do in Wisconsin right now. Um, that's where that that funding really goes. Um, and, and that's that's supposed to drive people to the uh, to the macro economy in our state. Um, then there's the the local level again funded with a room tax, the eight percent that's coming in here, um, and um, that brings people into the the Sheboygan area. Uh, and then, of course, equally as important is the individual hotel or, or lodging facilities marketing. Um, and, and all three of those pieces have to be there to have a successful tourism economy. So a little bit more on Wisconsin's room tax model. I'm not going to read this all to you, and one of these days I have to redesign it because it's way too much. But <laughs> it's, uh, it, it all starts when somebody comes to a property. Um, we collect the lodging tax uh, on their, their bill with uh, along with their sales tax and, and, and anything else that's on there. Um, it, it's one of our responsibilities to collect that. Um, we remit it to the, um, uh, to the municipality. Um, and in Wisconsin, you can keep up to, uh, the municipality can keep up to 30% of that. Um, the rest has to go to uh, tourism entity. I won't mention there are plenty of communities that, that put more than 70% um, uh, into the marketing and promotion of, of tourism as well. Um, so from there, um, there's uh, 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 they take that 70% and they either give it directly to a tourism entity or in your case to a tourism commission that contracts with um, with Visit Sheboygan. Um, and of course, they take that money and they spend it on, um, on promotion and, and the cycle goes over and over again. So again, uh, 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 to go through it in a little more detail, it starts with that overnight guest. They, they come in here, they pay that tax, and they go out and they spend money in the economy. It could be your gas station, it could be your restaurant, it can be your retail shops. Um, and, and don't forget the business traveler as well that's, that's here to do business. Um, so really, they're generating that revenue for, um, for the Sheboygan area. Um, and when that room tax comes, we, we send it right along to the, to the municipality. Um, I will mention um, uh, that um, uh, there are some grandfathered communities, but that's almost a moot point now. Um, under old tax laws, it got really screwed up and uh, it was fixed years ago now, so it's almost all phased out at this point. But um, overseeing the expenditures of all the room tax dollars on tourism promotion and tourism development is an important job, and that's what your room tax commissioners do. Um, since, since you're a part of a zone, um, uh, each municipality has some seats on that room tax commission. Um, it, it, it always differs depending on how big the municipalities are and whatnot. Um, but by law, they have to, they have to um, contract with the tourism entity, um, which is Visit Sheboygan here. Um, and um, and uh, then obviously Visit Sheboygan has to take that money and use it to put heads in beds, as we say in our industry, but, um, but specifically for tourism promotion and tourism development. So how can room tax be spent? Let's go back to the municipalities, 30% they get to keep for just a second. They can do whatever they want with it. Um, again, as I said, put it back to tourism is a great idea, but if you can't do that, um, you can do that, the, the fire trucks, the roads, the, the playgrounds, and all of those types of things. But when it comes to that 70% um, uh, uh, or more, that needs to go to the commission. And again, uh, the commission will then um, uh, uh, push it through to the, uh, to the CVB to do their, their, their work. Um, Talking a little bit about the definition of tourism promotion and tourism development, and this is where some of our debate comes in from time to time, um, but it's um, really any of the following that are significantly used by transient tourists and reasonably likely to generate paid overnight stays at more than one establishment that are owned by different persons. So marketing projects, um, those are media buys, those are the... the um, um, the, uh, uh, the electronic billboards or social media or magazines, um, TV ads. It's trying to get conventions into a town or, or, or meetings and groups into a town, sporting events, uh, the bus groups that were mentioned before. Uh, all of those things are, are good use of, of room tax dollars. Um, also for things like uh, tourist information uh, um, services, like your visitor center, for example. Um, and then tangible municipal development. 
including convention centers. So we're just talking about the, the bonding for Blue Harbor and that, that coming through or, or um, uh, uh, being up now. Um, but those types of expenditures are reasonable and in, in within the, the legal framework of, of the room tax law. Um, and, and oftentimes we get asked, well, what, how does the uh, 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 CVB or, or a, uh, a DMO like um, Visit Sheboygan um, uh, know if something's eligible to be spent on room tax? Is it really tourism promotion and tourism development or not? Um, uh, and same with the, uh, the, the, the um, room tax commissions. Um, the question is quite simple. It's really, do you have multiple lodging property operators that are telling you, yes, this is bringing tourism to us? Um, you know, we get calls at our office all the time saying, you know, we want to plant flowers down Main Street. We really think it'll make it pretty and then people want to come and stay here. Um, and that's a great thing to spend money on, but there really is no link that we've ever seen um, between that and directly putting heads in beds. So it's sometimes where you draw that line. But um, when you look at a professionally operated um, DMO like Visit Sheboygan, they can show you um, you know, all the metrics on what they're doing and show you the growth and how they're hitting their goals year over year. Um, and that's what it's about to, uh, to, to hire a professional, um, uh, uh, professional marketing, uh, tourism marketing uh, operators um, uh, to, to help promote your communities and bring visitors to, to, your, to Sheboygan. Um, also, um, uh, an important thing to ask is, will it be used for, for marketing projects um, or, or tangible municipal development? Um, again, the, the marketing projects, I think, are fairly obvious what's marketing and what's not. Um, sometimes we get a little um, wrapped up in what's a convention center and what's not. But again, here, I don't think you need to worry about that. So I'm not going to go into too many details. Um, but right now, you have a very healthy relationship and in, in, in seeing those the, 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 the results from um, from your room tax revenue, it just, just proves it. The great thing about that is as as that's paying off the 30% that the city gets to keep, keeps going up as well. So um, uh, it's, it's, it's rising all boats together. So my role in all this and the Wisconsin Hotel and Lodging Association's role is to, to educate, to be here at meetings like tonight and let people know what room tax is all about and why it's important for our, our industry and our communities. Um, it's to educate our elected officials on this and, and, and the general public as well. Um, we also advocate to uh, make sure that the law is strong um, and to make sure that uh, people are following it um, and, and to protect the law when there's abuses of it. And we do that in many different ways. Again, I don't, I don't, I don't think we need to dive into that tonight. But um, it's, uh, we have a very united community within the lodging industry to make sure that room tax is being used properly, um, that it's, it's funding the, um, the destination uh, management organizations that will bring visitors to our cities, which obviously makes it better for our businesses, but also for all those other businesses that are getting a piece of that $95 for every $1 promotional spend. So with that, um, uh, I'll leave it slightly under that two hours, I promised, but uh, <laughs> I just wanna let you know there are resources available on room tax whenever you have questions. Um, this is all public information at um, wisconsinlodging.org slash room tax. Um, feel free to go down there and we have a lot of different um, uh, uh, graphics and, and um, resources to show you how to best use your room tax, how to set up the room tax structure and, and more. Um, in addition to that, like I said, our role is to help educate the public and elected officials, and I'm always happy to take phone calls or emails or letters, um, and, and that's what we're here for. So always feel free to reach out. With that, I want to say thank you, and uh, look forward to talking or taking questions later. All right, we'll take a quick two-minute stretch break. If you're bored and want to ditch out, this is your out. If you want to hang out for the question and answer portion, hang tight. Thanks.
All right, Amy, Deidre, Brian, Paul, get up here. Pick a seat, any, any seat. I like using that thing. Yeah. <laughs> At arm's length, just so. <laughs> yeah, I'll sit by me, Paul. Come on. Oh. See, they, they put the camera on me to fix my hair. Yeah, take a seat. Any seat. All right. All right, thank you, thank you. And if you have more questions, my lovely assistant, Todd Wolf, uh, our city administrator will be running around and collecting more questions if they pop up, so. <laughs> yeah. All right, I also just wanna do a quick shout out. Uh, our wonder Some of our wonderful city team members are here, so when I call you out, just give a wave. Um, some of our city council officials are here. So we have um, Alderwoman Grazia Perella, Alderman Dean Decker. Um, we had uh, Alderman Joe Heideman. Joe, Joe's coming in. Um, and Alderwoman Amanda Salzar as well. So I think those are all the, the alders. Oh, Alder, Alder Flicky Paneski, and of course, um, right in front of me, Council President Barb Feldy. So um, they, 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 we appreciate the work and their leadership uh, to the city. So, all right. So uh, I stacked some questions uh, here um, that have similar themes. Um, you know, so if some of the questions are similar, I'll just kind of lump them together um, as we move forward. So. First question, first category for questions has to deal with just collaboration. Um, and when your mic is red, that means it's on. If you wanna buzz in, push it, and when it's green, you're in the queue. So I think I have everyone's. All right, so first question, volunteerism and threat. Oh, this is one of the words I can't say. Philanthropy. There we go. <laughs> are critical components for talent recruitment and retention. How are you engaging with the nonprofit sector and helping nonprofits thrive? And just buzz in whoever wants to go first. Paul, take it away. Uh, basically, most of my board is from the nonprofit sector, so we engage very thoroughly with them, um, which helps keep us in tune with what they're up to and them with what we're up to. When it's red, it's on, so just. Oh. oh, did I just turn it off? Yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. Well, what the? Hey. Um, sorry about that. I'm new at this. Uh, we engage the uh, nonprofit community in a number of ways. So you guys heard me give a, a whole long spiel earlier about some of our programs and events. Um, but we provide programming, we provide support services, additional tools and resources. At times we send groups out to um, like roll up our actual sleeves, um, literally not figuratively, and go out and um, work with our nonprofits um, in the area. We also wanna bring awareness, so a big part 
part of what we do in being the hub or being the connector is to bring people into their spaces. And we do that through building relationships and then again, raising that awareness. So when we're talking with our members and our members' employees and the people that work in their organizations, we're also talking about our nonprofit members and how they can connect and how they can um, be a part of the, the larger uh, community in a way that makes sense for them and that they're passionate about because everybody's got a passion. It might just look a little bit different. And we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to explore that passion and give back to the community in that way. Uh, from the Economic Development Corporation perspective, I would say we are um, just building out that model uh, for us. I would say we were very internal uh, previously, uh, but from our perspective, uh, whenever we're looking at new programming, um, what we try to do is we just host a Zoom call with uh, all the organizations um, regarding DEIB, just making sure we understand where the partners are and what, who's working on what, what's their initiatives, so that we understand what's going on over in the overall larger community. But also for those nonprofits that are in growth mode or from a business model's perspective, we are there trying to figure out how to get them um, to have solid business models, financial statements, putting those things together so that they can operate as effectively and efficiently as possible. So we partner on two different levels, one on the business model side uh, so that we can help them grow, but then also on from a community initiative standpoint, making sure that we're a good partner. And that's the part that we are continuing to grow and learn on. Uh, and I would just say, make sure that if, um, because we're not the traditional uh, nonprofit to partner with, just, um, we have open ears. Amy? Am I on? You're on. Well, of course, as I said, most of our, how we spend our room tax money is governed by Wisconsin State uh, statute. So since we're, our focus is to bring people from outside of the community into the community, and whether or not those sites and attractions are for-profit or non-profit, we don't look as closely at that because that is not how a tourist looks at it. Um, but what we're hopefully doing, and I'm sure our 240 billion visitors spending across the county certainly is shared in all of those local tours, uh, sites and attractions. Um, and in our visitor center, everyone is equally welcome as a site, attraction, or hospitality business to bring in their information and be equally represented in what the tourist is looking for when they're coming through our space and they're all equally represented on our website and any of the digital promotion that we have. Awesome, thanks everyone. Okay, now still on the topic of collaboration, two questions sort of similar. Um, so I'm gonna read both questions and we'll go down the line again. Uh, this question is from the anonymous citizen in the audience. Um, <laughs> thank you, Paul, for laughing. I appreciate that. How do the featured organizations currently, one, complement each other's respective work, and two, collaborate with one another? Are there any opportunities or more that you want to do moving forward? Next question. All of you are doing amazing things, but how are you really working together? There seems to be a lot of overlap, and I would challenge you to optimize collaboration. Who's teeing that one up? Brian? I'll, I'll start. Um, related to how we're, uh, you know, just bring up uh, talent recruitment, workforce development, uh, Deidre and I meet on a weekly basis, trying to understand who's working on what activities. Uh, also, from a talent recruitment perspective, um, I talked about we're going to be doing talent recruitment. Very similar to destination um, visit uh, Sheboygan, we are doing the outreach marketing. Once they come into the marketplace, I view that as a transition over to the chamber for that local relationship management. But external relationship management from a talent recruitment perspective, we own that. And we need to make sure that we're helping employers build their brand tied to the Sheboygan brand and we also understand the quality of life amenities as well. So that's from a collaboration standpoint. On the bid, uh, I know we help with like the pop-up shops and things of that nature, so we actually refer people to the city for the pop-up shops and work with the city on that. Uh, as far as, um, I'll just say for Visit Sheboygan, really we haven't had that engagement yet. You know, as we hopefully uh, do additional outreach marketing. So hopefully some of the collateral materials that we're doing for talent recruitment and destination marketing can be um, put together. 
right? and uh, so that we're actually leveraging off of each other. That would be a hopeful goal. Um, yes, so, and as Brian shared, the um, EDC and the County Chamber of Commerce, um, the EDC's role it has been that of attraction where we really do focus on that retention piece. So when Brian's talking about that transition, um, so we, we actually do a lot of work together to complement each other. And um, part of that question was, there seems to be a lot of overlap and how can we uh, reduce duplication? And we, I agree, and I think many of us agree that there is a significant amount of duplication um, and it needs to be looked at and it needs to be addressed because if we are duplicating efforts, that means that we are leaving gaps. And if we're leaving gaps and we're leaving holes, then we are not doing our jobs um, to the best of our ability. So um, the um, EDC and I, Brian and I, have in this past, um, well now it's been almost a year? Six months. Six months, okay. Um, so he's newer uh, to the uh, rodeo, but, um, but we've been spending on a weekly basis time together to better understand the, um, the purpose of each other's roles and organizations and how we can reduce duplication and better support one another. Um, the bid, um, you know, has gone through some transition as Paul had shared and we're working through some things. Just recently, um, I was invited to participate as a non-voting member on the board of directors. I'm very new to that role, um, but I'm hopeful that, that um, my ability to have a voice and represent the businesses that I represent on, um, in the bid district will hopefully see um, some value in that and that we can really grow and expand what the bid is doing. Um, Visit Sheboygan, you know, there have been times in the past where we've worked together um, and there haven't, in the last couple of years, there hasn't been a, a significant opportunity for us to um, work alongside or partner with tourism. We would certainly love to see that move in a different direction moving forward because we know that tourism um, is plays a significant role in in our economy and they're not just coming here to stay at hotels they're coming here to go to concerts at the wild center they're coming here to take a walk through bookworm gardens they're coming here to go see uh, live music at levitt amp um, they're coming here for programs and events that we are offering in our city, much like many other communities do. Um, but we're just really awesome. We have a beautiful space and we do it better. And so we're really hopeful that moving forward, we will see a greater collaboration and a greater partnership in working together because we know that it is an economic driver for Sheboygan County and specifically for the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. You mean? Sure. Um, actually, I would agree that um, some there is some overlap, and then with the EDC, of course, you're reaching out as well. Um, hopefully, all seven million tourists a year don't move here. We'll really have a housing I hope problem. They do. <laughs> we won't be able to Our keep up with that. <laughs> um, yeah, but in the last in the last couple of years, as Deidre said, I just want to say that it's it's not so much over overlap as I see as we have different lanes and different focuses. Um, I really, really, since we're looking outward and so far beyond the local community, when we get a people here, and by the way, our hotels are over 80% sold out for the summer already, and they were two months ago. So when, when we partner with our hotels and with the lodging association and we get people here as a DMO, we really look to the organizations such as the BID and the Chamber to get those people immersed in the community because we can't do both. Um, our focus is so directed um, with the, the DMO's mission of bringing people here. We can certainly help with that. Um, and like I said, it's a little bit different working with a, a county chamber when we're just city and Sheboygan area room tax zone tourism, we aren't really allowed to market like the American Club or the other, we can only market with our room tax dollars, our tourism zone. Those other municipalities each have their own tourism office and market their own tourism zone. Um, and Deidre and I probably do have to figure out how to form an alliance because there was a, um, the other tourism offices did have a collaboration group that was really unofficial, the Tourism Alliance of Sheboygan County, but we found out real quickly that with three very separate markets of five, Forbes five-star luxury market as the American Club, and with Elkhart Lake, such as um, that has the uh, generational Chicago market, tourism market, and then we're the Lakeshore Great Lakes market, three different markets that we go after. Um, we do need 
um, someone to pull that together, and it's my understanding that the uh, Chamber of Commerce has a grant from the county and has the county visitor center vestibule, which I think we all appreciate because that's where a person can go and find all of the information from across the county and all of it we can't carry in our lobby. Um, hopefully someday there is a way to bring all of those together. I would like to see all of us become satellite offices of each other. It's been talked about ever since I've been in this position. Um, and hopefully that can get done. And that might take more than just our respective organizations and maybe some of the leadership from the other communities to get that to the table and see how we can do that and cross those lines. Awesome, thanks Amy. All right, now we're, we're gonna have some, some specific agency questions here. Paul, you're up first. Is it only business owners that are assessed and get a fee to be a part of the bid? Is it residents or just businesses? Great question. So it's actually not businesses at all. Uh, it's property owners. And when I say property owners, only property, only property owners that engage in commercial real estate. So for example, the beautiful Encore building that was just built in the last couple of years does pay an assessment, but only, only based on the amount of retail space they have. None of the apartments are assessed. The library is not assessed. The Wild Center is not assessed. John Michael Clark Art Center is not assessed. Commercial buildings like mine, we are assessed. Commercial buildings like uh, the Nemshoff building next door to mine are assessed. Uh, individual businesses, Rudnick Jewelers is not assessed, but my real estate entity is. So that's, it's, it's a little bit abstract, it's a little bit confusing, um, but I hope I got it out there. So. Sounds good, thanks. All right, I don't know who this question is for specifically, but the question is, what percentage of people drive into Sheboygan County for work? Maybe that's a Brian question, or? <laughs> I need to look, uh, you can go back to a PowerPoint like a, uh, from six months ago. Um, I, would just, uh, I would just say um, the workforce uh, population coming into the county, employed in the county, we get 2% of the uh, workforce population coming from Fond du Lac County, 2% coming from uh, Zaki County, 6% uh, uh, is coming in from um, uh, Mantua County, and another 2% coming from uh, Calumet. Um, the goal, from my perspective, though, is with the Highway 23 corridor, uh, when it finally is completed, we have to get the east-west uh, from Highway 41 going north and south to start going east and west uh, from a true employment, and I would say destination as well, employment perspective, trying to make sure that we can grow the economy east and west and just not north and south. I think I addressed that. Sounds good. All right. It seems that a number of vacation rental properties have jumped significantly in re recent years. So I'm assuming these are like Airbnb type entities. Does the city collect taxes from these rentals? And if so, does the city direct any of these revenues to support housing development in the community? Chad. Is that a, That's a tax question. collection question? <laughs> I'm, I'm Chad Pelashek, the planning director. Sorry for those online, you're not going to see me because I'm standing in a corner. But anyway, um, the <laughs> This question actually came up from an older person earlier this week, so I have the answer. In May of uh, May 21st of 2017, under a state act 59, Governor Walker signed into law a bill that precludes municipalities from regulating through land use the use of Airbnbs and those types of short-term rentals. So under that statute, we're unable to regulate and have a zoning ordinance that says you can or cannot have short-term rentals. Um, so basically the short-term rental group was pretty aggressive in getting the legislature at the time to uh, buy into their um, idea, the verbos and the Airbnbs. So we aren't able to regulate where they go, whose neighborhood they're in, whose house they're in, um, but we can charge, we can have them pay room tax. So uh, we know that they're spiraling out of shape in the city. Um, hence the reason why we're engaging software that we'll be rolling out in the next month with host compliance that will do a quarterly monitor of all of the Airbnb sites, which those are considered marketplace rental sites, and there's over 60 of them. 
Um, and the company is telling us that there's 233 Airbnbs currently in the market. And we're hoping that with this software, we'll be able to get people to pay their fair share of room tax. So at least if we can't regulate, regulate them through zoning, we can get them to be paying room taxes for the overnight stays that they're having similar to a hotel. Awesome, thanks Chad. Next question for the chamber. How do you create your welcome wagon mailing list? Does it include apartments in some of the new condos that are coming to town? Well, I shouldn't tell you my secrets because then we, it won't be our secret anymore. Um, actually, the, the lists are provided by um, one of our wonderful um, places in the city of Sheboygan, our public library. It is as simple as that. You, if you are um, a member of the city of Sheboygan and you go to the library and you get yourself a library card and they have wonderful people that are working at the library because I don't know the name of the list off the top of my head, but they can point you in the right direction. So um, our tools and resources are available at our fingertips free of charge for city residents at the library. Awesome, thank you. And don't steal our idea, folks, I'm teasing. <laughs> All right, thank you. Next is for visit. Uh, what is the Visit Sheboygan STEAM nonprofit? Well, actually, when uh, Visit Sheboygan itself, the site was developed and built to suit, it was developed in mind with the fact that we are now in the middle of the um, National Marine Sanctuary that was just designated. Um, our partners to the north, um, Manitowoc Tourism, and our partners to the south, uh, Port Washington Tourism, all took as their role in the National Marine Sanctuary. And this is new, it's all in development. So this is all very new. A lot of the community doesn't understand what the National Marine Sanctuary is about yet. Uh, but it's a huge tourism attraction. There's many across the country. We visited one in Alpena, Michigan, just to see what the draw is. And it, it'll be incredible for our community once it gets rolling and NOAA gets their program rolled out. But our partners North and South took on um, more the history side of shipwrecks and maritime life on the Great Lakes. And being in the middle of it at Sheboygan, when we built the site, we built it along the river and we decided we would be the future and look at what future's like and um, protecting our fresh water and how we live in the ecology and water runoff and um, the environmental plant life and flora that, that are unique to our area. Um, and so we kind of built the site with that in mind, which is partially what the sphere is about in the window. Um, in the future, there is a science in the sky, completely off the grid kind of laboratory, teach the um, tourists and locals about hydroponics, aquaponics, um, water levels, different water conditions. Um, we're hoping to, in the future, the dream would be to have a research vessel if no one will help us as part of the marine sanctuary. Um, but visit Sheboygan Steam itself as this vision with the National Marine Sanctuary grew, we had some other partners, um, one of them right now, Millipore Sigma, and some other local partners who wanted to contribute to this. Um, but we're a 501c6, so contributions to this project um, as a visitor center site and attraction are not tax deductible. So we came up with just the Visit Sheboygan STEAM project on the side so that we could have um, other participants um, in other companies and they could also leverage the site and leverage the vision into the future with us and be able to contribute to it rather than contributing to the 501c6, which really wouldn't be possible for them. Awesome, thank you. All right, next question for all the panelists. All right, next topic, there's a few questions regarding board members. So where can individuals find a list of your board members who who is on them and how are they appointed? And then the follow-up question is regarding who is on the Room Tax Commission and how is the Room Tax Commission appointed? So board and Room Tax Commission, who's on it? How do they get on it? I'll go fast. Uh, for the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce, it is a, a collective of uh, chamber members. You have to be a chamber member in order to be on the board of directors. Any one of our members has an opportunity if they express interest. Um, it would then go to the executive committee, um, which is comprised of five um, members. Um, and then if they choose to uh, you know, move that group forward, if you will, it goes to the general 
membership and the membership votes at the annual meeting, um, typically the third Thursday of January of each year. So who is on our board? It is a diverse group of industry professionals. We really like to make sure that all industry and each, each group of members is represented. Um, so that could be nonprofits, it could be healthcare, it could be manufacturing, it could be legal, it could be accounting, you name it. You, you forgot to mention uh, your vice president, Kristen Stearns, is here. So. And our president, Mark Shu, is right oh, over he here is. as okay, well. We've got actually a, there, yeah. quite a few. Nellie Weiss is on our board of directors on our executive committee. So we've got quite a few board members in the space with us. Brian? Uh, related to the Economic Development Corporation, our uh, list of board members are, are on our website. Uh, related to the number of board members, we have, I think, 38 um, board members. Uh, yes, thank you for saying that. <laughs> um, so most of them uh, represent are either municipalities and, uh, or partners from the municipal perspective, but most of them are uh, corporate business leaders throughout the county. Um, so um, as far as how our board is selected, uh, actually we just had that conversation today at my executive committee, so we're looking at how we uh, revamp that a little bit. But currently there is a nomination committee, our board development committee, and they give a recommendation to our executive committee, which then submits it to the board of directors for adoption. Cool, thanks. Paul? Uh, Who gets to appoint your board? <laughs> Who decides? Uh, I believe it's you, Mr. Mayor. It is. Uh, our board <laughs> is listed on our website. Yes. I'm getting a nod. Yes. Uh, our board has um, certain stipulations. We need a certain number of property owners. We need a certain number of business owners. Um, some other partners. Uh, two of my non-voting partners are sitting right next to me. Um, we generally provide a slate to the mayor in November or December, and then he usually takes our recommendations and uh, and approves them. <laughs> um, I, I'd like it's to I'd like to council. confirm also by the council. I'd like to blame them, but generally we do provide the names for that list, and then uh, it's a good list. It's usually a good list. Um, I'm just I like that to some of them are in the room. Yeah, a lot of them are in the room. So yeah, uh, kind of a kind of a dream team going on right now. I like to say so. Thanks, Paul. Amy? Our board is, um, our board and the room tax commission are structured according to, once again, Wisconsin room tax law, which dictates who sits on our board and how many seats they have. Um, so in the municipality city of Sheboygan, um, according to the amount of room tax that is collected from there, they're allowed three seats on the board and on the commission. Um, and right now those seats are filled by the mayor, the city administrator, and uh, Chad Pelashek, the city planner. Um, I, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure if those are all board, board appointed. I think some of them are dictated by room tax law. Um, it's in the body. Yeah, and, and, or I'm sorry, that's the room tax commission. Now the town of Sheboygan, and the town of Wilson, um, at the level of room tax that they're collecting, they each have one representative on our board um, and on the commission. And according to the um, room tax law, both our board and our commission have two hotel representatives. Um, and then on our board, we have another site and attraction member that is in our bylaws. Um, so those people, we, I, we don't list. Um, actually, the commission is, is a city entity governed by room tax law, so they would have the list of the room tax commission. I mean, we would have it, but you could ask me for it if you wanted to, but that's really dictated by them. On the board of, our board of directors for Visit Sheboygan Incorporated, um, we don't put that on our website, but I would be happy to email it to you. I can tell you who they are right now. Um, we have the, the mayor, um, Todd Wolf, um, Chad Pelashek, Matt Four. Um, James Schwinn from the Towns, and then uh, Sue Engler from Blue Harbor, and Cameron Bopp from Pride Hospitality, and Mike Fro um, from the uh, was in Parks and Recs and Waterfront Marina. Um, and we, the reason we don't list that on our tourism site is because, first of all, tourism, tourists aren't interested 
and who's on our board, and they are the users of our site, not really local people. We'll be happy to email it to you, but another thing we don't want happening is a tourist who might have a bad experience. Instead of calling us as the tourism center and the customer service face, calling some of our board members. <laughs> um, so we like to keep that off of our site. Can we do that? Can, if you can. <laughs> avoid, avoid angry people? No. Well, locally you can call them if you want to, but tourists is a different thing. <laughs> All right, just a few more questions here. I know we're a little over time, but we'll quick do a quick rapid fire here. Next one is for Brian. Does the SCD EDC, SC EDC I almost tripped up on that one, charge for their clients? We are entirely free. <laughs> um, so whether you invest in us or not, um, we will provide the same services uh, to you. Um, so our entire goal is to advance opportunities and remove barriers for companies and individuals to advance their dreams. All right, next one is for the chamber. 5% is 5% of revenue from grants on par with revenue within other peers and other similar chamber of commerce. So I would say that there are probably, um, there are not probably two chambers alike. Um, and I say that because um, some chambers operate as also a bid or main street as well as the tourism. So they receive property assessment, um, dollars, they also receive the room tax dollars and then they operate as a chamber of commerce kind of on the side. Um, some chambers of commerce operate um, as a, a collective of economic development um, as well as a chamber of commerce and so they would receive economic um, funding from the municipalities. We um, are like many other chambers in that we are really truly um, pretty close to standalone. So we do receive 5% uh, of our funding and grants as Amy shared. Um, part of that, roughly 1% of our funding comes in the form of a uh, tourism, county tourism um, grant annually so that we can fund our vestibule and we can also produce the community guides and we can also print the county maps that are distributed um, throughout the community and beyond. Um, so I don't know that there's really two that are alike that I could um, really compare to because it is also significantly different. In our market, um, meaning Sheboygan County, we are the only, um, well, I shouldn't say that, um, so Elkhart does operate as a separate chamber of commerce and they also have a separate tourism. Um, but I do believe they receive property assessment. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, Sheboygan Falls and Plymouth um, operate as tourist, bid, main street, as well as chambers of commerce. So in our space, we are probably truly the only chamber of commerce, which is why you see much of our programming um, and the tools and resources we, we provide look significantly different. We don't, we focus on uh, we don't do, you know, parades and community events. We focus more on the workforce development, the professional development, and the governmental affairs and advocacy, which really is in line with what a, the true nature of a chamber of commerce was established for. Thank you. All right, for Visit Sheboygan, how do you measure the results of your tourism marketing campaigns? Well, we saw some of the metrics um, up tonight during the slideshow. Obviously, the room tax is one of the largest. Visitor spending going up is another one. Um, for individual campaigns, we can see right back to where those touch points are and where they move across from our um, media buys and platforms all the way into the visitor center. Um, and we can see right now, especially since we started our uh, Midwest campaign and going down into the south, um, those travelers are coming there. We can see the touch points through our social media, through our websites, through all the digital platforms, um, in our visitor guide requests and coming right through to the business center. And we do actually look at the cross, cross numbers coming in. We tabulate where they're coming from, the times they go out, especially with Google Analytics, it's so much smarter than our own brains. It can pretty much drill down right to when that touch point happened and where it happened. Awesome, thank you. All right, so that concludes the card questions. So we'll open it up if, for a few questions. Um, if anyone from the public has any final thoughts or questions for the panel, come up to the podium. <laughs> Then just say your name and let us know what question you got. Hi, 
My name is Paul. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Um, you guys are doing a great job. I just got here about two and a half weeks ago. Love the city. Uh, toys restaurant down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I am, uh, I'm, I'm coming into the community as a Bible worker. And I just started a couple weeks ago. And I'd like to get our church involved in the community. And we're a nonprofit organization. And so I figured I would ask you guys where you could direct me to become part of that. I, I talked to Scott earlier today, but I forgot to ask him how to do that. So <laughs> I, I can, think I'm answering I can help you question. get a hold of Scott, no problem. Is Scott here? Where's Scott at? He he, he, he left. Oh, Scott yeah. left? All right. I, yeah, I think okay. Scott's a good, good. So Scott's the guy. Yep. All right. Well, all right. Well, that was easy. Sounds good. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Welcome to Sheboygan. Hey, we man. appreciate you coming here. You're learning a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyone else? Anyone else? Last call. All right. Mayor, well, before you adjourn, is there anybody online that would like to unmute and ask a question that hasn't been answered? All right, well, <laughs> that, that, that concludes our program for this evening. Thank you everyone so much for attending. Stay involved, stay engaged, stay plugged in. Feel free to reach out to any of these organizations uh, for more information or to be a part of uh, the continuous progress. So thank you. Thank you.